During the Gulf War, the BBC asked News Force to set up a command centre in Tel Aviv. The most logical place was the Tel Aviv Hilton Hotel because right next to the hotel was a battery of missiles that would be basically directed up into the sky to take out the Scud missiles that had been shot by Saddam Hussein into the State of Israel. So we hired the entire top floor, set up our cameras in three different areas, we had the edit suite, we had all the equipment, we even had our chemical warfare suits, we had our masks, our rubber gloves, and everything was ready for the live broadcast into the nine o'clock news in London, which was about um, five o'clock in Israel in the afternoon. And as we were going live, suddenly these Scud missiles started flying in over our heads. Some landed in the water in front of us, others landed around us, some missed completely. And it was incredible television. And halfway through the, the broadcast, we were rapidly stopped by the Israeli um, IDF, the Israeli Defense Force generals, who were incredibly fed up with us. They came in and at gunpoint said, you guys should be shot for treason. And we said, what do you mean? And they said, you are traitors to the state of Israel. I said, no, you're not. We're the BBC. We're filming this you know, live for the news. And they said, no, you're not. Who do you think? is watching the news in his nuclear bunker in Baghdad. It's Saddam Hussein. I said, yeah, I guess he could be. He is. And you know what? He just has to pick up his red phone to his artillery and say, left 100, up 200, on target, rapid fire. He said, you've just become a forward electronic observation post. And I said, what do you mean? He said, well, in war, we always send observers out into the field and they basically report back. You've just done it electronically. So Saddam doesn't have to have anybody sitting in the state of Israel determining where his bombs are landing. You're doing it all for him. So you have to stop immediately. You're risking people's lives. And I realized, obviously, this was a massive risk to people's lives that we had to stop. But at the same time, you know, Israel's a democracy and we had the right as media to, to cover the war. So we had to come up with a compromise. Well, we were duck marched down sort of flights of stairs into the basement and after three or four hours of heated debate and discussion we came up with a solution we agreed that we would only film the bombs flying through the frame of the camera we wouldn't show them actually exploding on the ground or in the area and then if we filmed the aftermath we wouldn't um, say where it had happened we wouldn't say in Herzliya or Jerusalem or Tel Aviv we'd say within the state of Israel four bombs landed and this was the effect of it so that way we were still able to report the story, but we weren't giving away any military intelligence. It was difficult. And it was an extremely difficult situation because Peter Arnett was the CNN correspondent in Baghdad. And he was on the roof of the Al Rashid Hotel and he was seeing the Americans flying in and bombing the TV station and everything else. And he was under the same kind of restriction. So I think it was the first time that a global war had been broadcast live into people's living rooms and none of us understood the impact of that live television from a point of security from people's lives but let alone the, um, the appetite by the audience people are absolutely fascinated by a world war unfolding in front of them in their living room like a big soap opera <laughs>